Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr Żorowski, and this is Python Buff. Uh, there's a Gobi document on gobydebian.org with a agenda, but uh, we can ignore it and talk about anything Debian Python related. If you have questions, remarks, uh, anything that can be improved in the uh, interpreter itself or, or mostly in uh, helper tools. So speak up. And there's a mic on each table, I guess. So this is recorded. And uh, if you can, then please use mic. What's bothering you in related to Python? Um, uh, how is the transi transition from Python apps to, to Git going on? I, I think they are almost there, right? Um, it's pretty much. So it's pretty much done. I just need someone to say that looks good. Let's go for it, okay. which no one has done yet. <laughs> I don't think anyone else except me has looked at it yet. Um, so I, I've got a draft migration up on Alioth. I can do a new one and then just need to go ahead. So we are close. I will take a look at, let's say, my package, the packages I know well, and then I will say whether it's okay or not. But That'd be great. Thanks. Okay. But probably other people do, do, uh, should do the uh, yeah, yeah. To, to check. Oh, once a few people are happy, I think we probably fine. Okay. And then Git DPM migration will follow to Git GB, Git GBP PQ or what? That's a good question. So currently you. have been switching the app uh, repositories to git dpm or what? Um, so for PAPT, I did not do dpm. So OK. But so I'm switching to PQ is still going to take. Hmm. PQ is something you can do locally. It's not something that the repository needs to be formatted for. Um, when you use PQ, I think it's going to change all your patch names. But that's fine, because that's something you do when you edit the patch series. Uh oh, Dimitri says you can keep the names. Yeah. In git build package patch queue, if inside the commit that it generates you a GBP patch queue topic or name, you can specify the exact name you want the patch to have, such that if you generate that metadata namespace, blah, 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 dot patch, it will be blah, 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 dot patch when you export it. Okay. And when you import it, does it generate that? Um, I don't think it generates that by <laughs> default. <laughs> but if you do add those magic uh, lines inside the commit message, it will become round trip safe in terms of patch names. If there's something we can put in a gbp.conf to make that happen by default, we should be doing that. I would love to find out if there is such a conf. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the related thing about Git is branch names. So I exported all the master branches as master. Um, Dep10 says that should be Debian slash master, or Dep in some cases, Debian slash SID. We should make a decision. Anything? That is not master is OK, I think. Just avoid having master as the packaging branch, because it may conflict with upstream. Like, almost every upstream uses master. If we're using a source tarball flow rather than emerging from upstream Git repo flow, that doesn't matter. But I guess people are free to use whatever flow they want. 
Yeah, I prefer to have targles only, uh, but uh, not so. It, there probably should be exceptions if people really need an upstream um, branch, but uh, by default, I think the better way for us is to keep the tarball scheme only. Yeah. So the thing is, if we want to not use master, we're currently mu using master from D for DPMT. So then we must change DPMT, probably. Do we want to do that wholesale? That's going to be a breaking change on everyone who's using the repository, so we're going to have to coordinate it well. I don't have experience with EQ, so I will just shut up for a moment. I'm not. I don't have a strong opinion because I I'm not using PQ yet. So. I don't think using PQ really has anything to do with the branch name. Um, just that we're doing big conversions, so let's get the branch name right. Yes, um, I'll need to do some work to make that happen, but yes. Yep. What does, what does git build package with PQ use by default? Does it use uh, Debian? I assume master? it's up to you. Um, we can configure that in the Debian uh, uh, GBP conf. Yeah. Actually, way. no, I assume it uses master by default. I think default master is the default, but you can configure it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by default, GBP uh, will will, uh, will uh, refuse to build in in the branch that is not described in gbp.conf. But uh, you can also tell it to not be annoyed by it, and it's going to build. So it's best not to specify it in gbp.conf. That's what uh, Onrush has been doing on our packages. Which, which directive fan? To ignore, not to have to like the Debian packaging branch equal the mic package. Can you the mic over to Yes, it's option for GBP, which is uh, JIT ignore branch, which means it uh, don't check if uh, current branch matches that one in GBP conf. That's what you wanted, right? And uh, it's not needed to be put in every package in GBP conf. You can have one global config, and there you can put this option, and doesn't matter then. Sounds like something we should encourage our users to do then. Is anyone taking notes or is my gobby pad stale? I am. Who knows about these branch names? Okay, let me reconnect then. <laughs> questions if not we can talk about Python 2 and removing it from the archive so we probably should announce it to users somehow release notes that removal of Python 2 
which will happen at some point, probably not, definitely not in Buster, and probably not in Bullseye, uh, but uh, we should prepare for it. So my my ad idea is to uh, my idea is to uh, we already don't uh, provide Python two binary package for packages for new uh, packages. Uh, we are not actively removing the old ones yet, but uh, maybe we should consider it. Um, we definitely should uh, add a note about uh, uh, deprecating Python 2 in um, Buster's release notes, I think. And start removing uh, Python 2 binary packages in Bullseye, maybe, or I don't know if Buster is too soon. Or should we, at least uh, those that don't have uh, reverse, reverse dependencies, we can start removing now, but I would not be in such a hurry for now, maybe. Do you have different opinions? So during Deb Camp, uh, we had a, well, buff um, about removing well, getting rid of more and more Python 2 uh, dependencies, but without the goal to remove Python 2 itse itself for Buster. And we came up um, with, well, a lot of things to do. Um, and um, that resulted of us wanting to, to uh, have a mass bug report filing uh, that was announced to Debian Python and Debian Devel. So there are one or two people who are against such a filing, um, both not members of the Python community or Python packaging community inside Debian. And um, so we will end up with more than 3,000 bucks to file. And um, we wrote down the different classes of bugs we intend to file in a wiki page. That's wiki.debian.org, sprints, 2017 Python 3 Montreal. Um, so just saying we want to remove Python 2 doesn't work. We saw that um, um, during the last few years. Um, if, people, if people are not moving uh, or doing the conversion actively, um, nobody's doing that and it's a still stand. So we, we don't move forward. So, so I would say we, we need these bug reports uh, so we can measure uh, how far we are away from uh, removing Python from the distro. And um, well, <coughs> if if we can remove Python 2 for Buster, that's okay. But honestly, I don't think that's uh, doable because we still have applications um, not ported to Python 3. How about uh, removing uh, as many uh, library packages uh, as possible, but uh, keeping the interpreter itself for now. Uh, even so even when all uh, package um, Python two um, packages are removed, the library ones. How about keeping the interpreter itself for one more release when the all other things are removed? I think it's too early to I talk about that because we still have applications using the interpreter. And the library. And the libraries. Right. So, so if you want to remove Python 2 libraries which are not used, which are leaf packages, then yeah, yes, yeah. Um, if you want to, to do that analysis and, and file bug reports about it, then please do it. I would say that's at least worth having the information. Yeah, I Beca don't because mean not Buster. Uh, yeah, because if we, we don't have this information, we speculate um, and we, we can't come to any conclusion. 
So you already, during the sprint, uh, you already have a list of packages affected and only the bug reports are missing or? Sorry, uh, no, I, I, didn't, I did not here? do that analysis. So I, maybe I can, um, so we wanted to file bug reports for four classes. So um, that these are packages providing a Python foo binary package, but no Python 3 foo binary package. The second class is um, we wanted to file um, bug reports for packages which use Python Sphinx, but not Python 3 Sphinx. Um, that means uh, if we can use Python 3 Sphinx to build the documentation, we should do it. Um, there are cases, uh, what was it, for Autodoc, where you import the, uh, um, the modules into the same process. So you still need to um, be able to, to build with, with Python 2 if you have a Python 2 only module. Um, so then we have some, some binaries in, in USR bin. And um, so from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to provide uh, such binaries for both using both Python 2 and Python 3. So we should just drop these um, because, um, well, we have name conflicts. There are several solutions currently um, how to make these binaries coexist, uh, either by appending a two or three, or by using alternatives. So I think that can go away, and we should just use the binaries using Python 3, um, and maybe split split out these binaries into a, a new, well, Debian binary package, or just keep them in the Python 3 uh, binary package. And um, sorry. Then we have uh, um, applications still using Python three instead of Python two, and um, so that would be packages which have a dependency on Python two, but um, are not called Python dash foo itself. And um, we should try to find out if these are already ported to Python 3 or if they can be ported to Python 3. So these are the four, four classes. I mean, we could add the, another class um, to, to remove leave Python 2 only packages um, if they have Python 3 counterparts. Um, maybe we should keep some Python 2 packages if they don't have Python 3 counterparts. I don't know. Yes, so, so that, that's the, um, so who of you are looking at other bug reports before you upload a Python package um, and fix these bug reports? Or is the package I do upload? Yes. I always look on all bug reports. Because I, I, I always check uh, the list of bug reports <coughs> and whether there's something to fix. Because there was a concern that we filed this uh, amount of bug reports um, and nobody closes them. Uh, so, yeah. That, that's what back reports are for, so I don't see a reason why not to yeah, report seems, them. This seems like a normal result of any mass bug filing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, from my point of view, I think, you know, this is 2070 and we should not have any user scripts executing Python 2 in slash user bin. <laughs> well, Python 2, yes. <coughs> well, yeah. And, and like to me, this should be like a wishless Linetian in a couple of months time, a medium Linetian, and then like a warning, and then like an auto FTP master reject, you know? <laughs> because like, honestly, we don't want Python 2 anymore. <laughs> if we suggest this to Lamy, he'll probably make the Linetian checks for us. So the, um, Chris Lamp wanted to join the um, the BOF last week, uh, but couldn't do. Um, the good thing is that he wrote two or three Lintian checks to help with these goals. Um, so 
you will find these as well um, on your favorite bug tracker or package tracker page. Um, so do we agree that such bug reports should be filed? Um, should we wait? How long should we wait? Maybe start with a wish list and then keep uh, upgrading the priority. Uh, I'm not sure about the libraries, but like for example, anything that ships scripts and executables and user bin or whatever, I think those need to go now, <laughs> like or probably like last year. <laughs> As if, in those are overdue. If the application works with Python free, then definitely. If it doesn't, then even if problem. it doesn't work, the remove the application. Like people can install it from Chis Shop if they want to. I'm probably more progressive than most people. <laughs> you know, maybe I, I it will, ch if people will see that you will not be in Debian unless you are an application that uses Python 3, maybe that will finally start motivating people. Like I, upstream. I would not remove such applications right. for now. Okay. okay. So not RC. <laughs> so then um, there came up another question um, should be yeah what will happen with a Python executable so use have been Python and um, so, so un unless you kick both uh, Scott and me from Debian uh, Python defaults user bin Python will not point to Python 3 Unless, so I mean that unless that Python 2.7 is removed from the archive. Unless, okay. Yeah, if it's <laughs> if it's <laughs> if it's removed, my my idea is to have at least one Debian release without user bin Python symlink, so that the uh, system administrators that use Python 2.7 and upgrade from the previous release, they probably will not remove Python 2.7 package. It will most probably work in the next release. So let's keep the user bin Python, uh, let's remove it and let administrator uh, re-add it if they want. And then in the next release, we can add it back pointing to um, Python 3. That's my idea. So, so I'm not sure about what you said. Um, so so un unless there is a, until there is a Python 2.7 package in Debian, User bin Python symlink should not be changed. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so th I think everybody agrees with that. Great. Um, and uh, however, um, if we have a um, so so Python upstream ec well expects um, to have a Python executable at least. It's Ignore uh, it's upstream. That's my, that's what I say. So so last time when I was adding the Python to symlink. Before the PEP was finalized, I was told you ha should have to follow upstream. Now you tell me I should not follow upstream. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, 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 in the meantime, upstream changed so their mind because of uh, no. And well, they are they are going with the time while Debian stands still, and I think um, in a few years nobody will understand why Debian doesn't have a Python executable and nothing else. So I think we should prepare for the time when we will have a Python executable again. Yeah, yeah. So we should start, we, we can start uh, so preparing if, right if now. So if you disagree that much, then sh you should get involved upstream uh, because there's a new PEP uh, talking about reintroducing a Python executable. And I think working against the upstream community is just plain wrong. Um, so. I made the proposal we should have an, at least a Python, uh, a Debian release uh, without a Python executable before doing something else about the ex executable. So that would give users um, a hint, uh, wow, my scripts, my local scripts, just, just using Python don't work anymore. Um, so I have to adjust either by to moving to Python 2 or to Python 3. If the release without uh, the symlink sim is uh, the same, uh, the first one without Python 2.7, then that's exactly what I am proposing. 
The I'm one release I, without? Uh, yeah, sure, but but then we should, uh, well, we should not say um, we will never ship um, a Python sim. We, we, we should never. Can you put it on your head? <laughs> Well, we, we should never we should we should not say um, we will never ship a Python uh, binary again. No, we that should that's not we what I am saying. O okay, I um, uh, because uh, it sounded like that. No, well so all I um, meant uh, is that until we have Python 2.7, we should not change the symlink. Once we remove the Python 2.7 from the archive, we should for one release remove the user bin Python symlink as well. Then in the next release. Provide it again, pointing to Python uh, free. Yeah. Can I interject from the audience a question? So I really don't like the situation as a system administrator where if I have to reinstall a machine from scratch, I won't get Python 2. And um, I'm expected to have Python 2 question mark in order to keep running programs. Like I have a fleet of Python, I have a fleet of Debian, say, stretch machines. I upgrade them all to Buster or let's say to next release if Python, that's the one where Python 2 is gone. I have Python 2 scripts, I'm still using them. One of these machines has a disk failure, I reinstall it from scratch, this package is gone. There's no way for me to get Python 2 other than taking out a deb from the old release and running deep packages. I don't, that feels like a weird place to be. Um, my, my also concern in addition to that one is that it seems to me that you're happy to leave machines intentionally insecure and vulnerable and running something huge as Python 2 and leaving it on disk and not forcing removal of it simply because of convenience to keep local stuff running despite the fact that it's, to me, it's a security liability to even keep 2.7 on upgrades. Uh, you know, either remove it completely or keep providing it. You know, you cannot, you cannot say it's not available for new installs <laughs> and say that you don't support it because clearly it will remain on disk for all the people who upgrade and then they are effectively vulnerable. But it's not in the archive, so we are not supporting it. The, the administrators that uh, will not remove it should know what they are doing. I would not force them into, if they want an unsecure interpreter, then that's their call. I would not try to force them into uh, reinstalling uh, Python from source or rebuilding. Le leaving packages on disk is not something uncommon. Yeah. We do that. And, and, and I think that if you do leave it on disk, then when you do switch Python to point to Python 3, you're back at the same problem that you wanted to avoid in the first place. That's, one, that's why we want one release without user in Python, so that administrators notice and... Yeah. Uh, the thing uh, is, if you don't remove Python on upgrade, people don't notice. How about having... We will, re we will not remove the interpreter, but just the symlink. So if administrators... They will not notice. How? How about, having uh, how about having a Python 2 legacy package that would carry that symlink? And then like administrator, it's, it's advice not to use it, but then if you really need it, then you can use it, knowing that it's wrong. I have this feeling that someone is going to be pro providing a supported Python 2.7 of some sorts, and people are probably going to be running it. Um, but we also don't need to get into this discussion right now because it is still premature, isn't it? We're not talking about removing libraries. We're talking about removing what happens when we remove the Python interpreter. It's just I don't see any benefit in waiting for one release because the symlink will remain on disk for a lot of people. Why will it remain on the disk? It's because the easiest thing for a sysadmin is to recreate the symlink. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one-liner. If they did that, yeah, but that they know the that's a one-liner. Uh, and I think the thing that you're trying to avoid or to warn people or prevent things, that when you do switch Python to point to Python 3, you're going to get the exact the same amount of breakage. And waiting for one release only makes things complicated for us 
to, ch to make that change without actual any user benefit, unfortunately. So As in the, the, the benefits of waiting for one release without a sim link actually will create a lot of negativity that Debian doesn't ship Python. <laughs> and it will not actually gain any benefit in the upgrade case or the new install case. So you want to break, up sh uh, you want to break the system of the user to just make sure that they know that we're not shipping it? Yes, unfortunately. What? I think if they want it to work, they're going to make it work. Correct. And breaking it on them, making it really hard for them to make it work just pisses them off. Yeah. So you are living in a comfort zone with Python 2 because Python 2 doesn't, didn't change for the last 10 years. <laughs> so That's fine. Right. And, and I mean, um, we ship new compilers. We ship new Perl versions. Um, and so many local scripts should break with these changes. So I think I, I don't want to special case Python at this point. So do you want to have one Debian release without user being Python symlink or? I, so I, I don't care that much about the, once we remove Python 2.7, yeah, I don't yeah. care about the right, symlink. Right, right. And I, think, um, I think the benefit of running Python enter and that it launches something is better than running Python enter and it says command not found. <laughs> and I think having a release with command not found will be extremely scary to a lot of people. <laughs> I think there so are that, more that system administrators that depend on the user being Python than users that type and don't use well, tab. Yeah, yeah. I, it's so user bin so for completeness, there were some proposals on uh, the Debian Python mailing list that um, we should do something um, if um, a user types Python and there is no Python interpreter available. So that might be a shell, shell alias, which looks, is it an interactive invocation and then just points the user either to Python 3 or st even starting the Python 3 interpreter so is the command not found package there, yeah. which is not installed by default in Debian? So there are proposals to to work around that for the interactive case, just yeah. without but saying is that good. If or you bad. are proposing to provide some kind of script that will detect if it's run inside a, a mm. terminal or as a shell script, then I don't think this is a good idea because there are lots of appli applications that will slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. no, I, so I, I have just pushed a branch 10 seconds ago uh, to Python Mux that if you are running Python 3.5, will run so using libpython and skip the exec. And so it does very little checking. It just checks is a TTY0 or something like that. And so in the common case, your slowdown over user bin Python actually being Python 3.5 is minimal. Mm -hmm. So it links libpython 3.5. It looks at what is the file I'm running. Do I look like I'm interactive, or does the file look like it's plausibly Python 3, or does it have a shebang Python 3, which is all work that you know, you're doing anyway. If all of that is true, it will just run pymain out of libpython 3.5. And so we can benchmark it, but I think that that's, I'm gonna, I'm, I would like to advocate more aggressively for that because I think that's the best solution. I think that having a release where user bin Python is missing is going to be weird for everyone. Having a release where you know, some people have user bin Python on their Debian buster systems because you know, that's where or their next version systems because you know, that is what happened when upgrade and somebody else upgrades it and then you have like people asking for help and I'm like, I can't get Python to run. You're, I'm like, what are you talking about? I run Python and I have the same version of Debian. Uh, <laughs> I think that's going to be a very bizarre situation for everyone. I think it's going to be even more bizarre compared to what other upstream distros are doing. I want to know if we feel comfortable with this approach, and I also want to sort of pitch it at the other distros. And I think the other distros have sounded, Red Hat in particular, sounded interested in we should do something with this multiplexer. Yeah. So. And I mean, but if like, we, if we, we already agreed that uh, if there is a Python 2.7 package, uh, we should not change the symlink, right? So once it's removed, there's no need for any script that detects if it's uh, meant to be run as Python 2 or 3. We can just provide a Python 3, mm. same link to Python 3. And Correct, and not wait a release. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, multiplexer I, sounds I fun. I was considering removing it uh, yeah. for one release, just yeah. to people, to the system administrators, to notice that. But uh, if it's a problem, then I mean, for me, they will probably notice if uh, if uh, their applications are run under Python free and break as well. So maybe it's there, there's no need to. I mean. If we today can upload something, which when an interpreter launches a script which has shebang user bin Python, raise a warning, in the future it will be ambiguous. Please either use user bin Python 2 or user bin Python 3. Please make a choice now. <laughs> because, because, you know, a failure mode where you get interpreter not found is not nice like from the kernel, like you cannot exact a binary because the user bin Python is missing. That's not nice. If you get an error message that print is not a function or I don't know what the keyword print is, I think that's okay. I think people will understand what's happening. <laughs> that's something uh, has to be done in interpreter. Yeah. We, we talked about, uh, because there is an easy way to replace all the shabangs uh, at least for packages that use DH Python 2, from user bin Python to user bin Python 2, I can do that in DH Python. Yeah. And can all we packages. Are we that, okay to do that now? For example, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't. It hurt. makes no difference in in yeah, to I, current systems. I don't systems. know if there's a gain, but there's no downside, so I can do that. That would be useful because that will give a lot of hint to people as what I should do with my scripts. If all the system scripts use user bin Python 2, then maybe I should use the same. Because people mimic what's happening in packages. I should shut up. Uh, so, so, <laughs> then the, so, so then the question is, um, if, we, um, if we now make our packages be Python 2 or Python 3, would then um, something that is, inv that is invoking the shebang with plain Python, would that then say, um, please make a choice now? Or would that say, um, this is going to switch over um, unless you're prepared for this to switch, um, make Python 2 explicit? So would, that, would those scripts be recommended to, if they are, if they are Python 3 compatible, um, would they be recommended to say Python 3 anyway? Or would, they, would it be OK for them to say Python 3? So it's basically the question is, what would the wording of the warning be? So I, sorry, I didn't get, get it yet. Um, when a script is run that, is, that is, has shebang user bin Python, would it say, um, please make a choice now, either say Python 2 or Python 3? Or would it say, if you are insisting on Python 2, make it say Python 2? Like a warning or depreciation warning or whatever in standard error. I have a question for the room, uh, particular people who run mixed environments. Is it useful to you, or do you anticipate it being useful to you, to write scripts that are compatible with both Python 2 and Python 3, and can run on both RHEL 6 systems, which have only Python 2, and you know Debian 11 systems that have only Python 3? Is that a use case that we want to attempt to support, or not? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. No, no, repeat it, please. Oh, okay. Do you want me to repeat it? Yeah. Okay, I'll repeat it. Is it useful to have some mechanism to support running scripts on both, running Python 2 and Python 3 compatible scripts on both really old systems like RHEL 6, where it does not have a Python 3 or something, or like Mac OS, which doesn't have Python 3, and also on new Debian systems that only have a Python 3, or let's say new Ubuntu live CDs that only have a Python 3 and don't have a Python 2, is it worth supporting this? Currently, if we go the route of letting user bin point, Python point to Python 3 in the future, that will solve this problem at the expense of different problems, which is incompatibility. I, I mean, I had a joke proposal to have user bin Python 2 or 3 as an interpreter shebang. That doesn't exist on those devices. Sure, but. We have about two minutes, so I don't know if you guys want to wrap it up. So I, I'm not sure about that. Python 2 or 3 thing, um, <laughs> because if you, well, if you have simple script, scripts, you, 
you can convert these to um, Python 3 or Python 2, and there's no need to uh, to run them uh, under Python 2, even if if they work, and if they work on Python 3, and and when you have more complex scripts, you are adding third-party dependencies, and and then you have to to have well these modules installed for for both, and that becomes a very complicated um, situation. So so I'm not sure about that proposal. So. So we are almost out of time, but uh, if you have uh, any more questions, uh, uh, please don't hesitate to ask us. At least when it comes to Python helpers, you can contact me mm -hmm. uh, or Matthias if it's uh, related to the interpreter. And thanks for coming. <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you. <laughs>